Good everyone, on today's video, and today we have part two of my little showcase. Again, this is going to be a little mini series that I'm going to turn into a playlist because it's just easier that way. And today we have Germany, and as you can tell by the showcase part one, two, and three, I have a crap ton of German premiums. The major, like, there's going to be quite a few event vehicles in here, so I'll point out the ones that are, and of course, any vehicles that I plan to add into the collection in the future. I will mention. Of course, in the USA, there isn't really anything I need to add to the collection, other than I'd probably say the 190 A8, but no real point mentioning that, because that is a low priority at the moment. So in terms of Germany, there isn't really anything here either. I mean, there is the German Churchill, which I do, which I do want to add, and there's also the, I think it's the Befelswagen Panzer IV. I do want to add that to my collection at some point. Um, so... Those are the two real vehicles of note that I want to add to the collection in Germany. Starting us off with the HG51B2H. You would have seen the video for this by now in the Rare Vehicle series. And this is certainly a plane that is more of a meme, to be honest. It's, it's one of those planes that you can just get cheap on the marketplace, or at least in the vehicle box, and just muck around. It's not a plane that you take seriously. It's just for fun. And when you've got 10 kilogram anti-infantry bombs to use against vehicles, you can always try and get a kill with them. And whilst it is very difficult to do so, they are very funny. And it really gives this thing a bit more character, you know? And given it's... Well, I've had this thing nearly two years now, I think. It's certainly an aircraft that, whilst it is limited in its capability, it's fun. And that's the real main selling point for it. Next up, we have Flegel's BF109A. A vehicle which, surprisingly, I didn't get much negative response from, for my review of it. Um, this is an aircraft that I quite like because it gives me a challenge. And especially with the modern power creep of low-tier War Thunder, it's an aircraft that really can pull its weight but you really have to learn how to fly it first. It is like the normal 109s, however, it is much more underpowered and it doesn't climb anywhere near as well. And as a result, it is a premium that I really think needs to be changed out, in my personal opinion. I think the players who have it should keep it, but anyone who started with Germany, like I think Harry started with Germany, there needs to be a new premium added in to replace this, because the problem is with the Flegels, is it is a good aircraft, but you need to be experienced to do so. And for a new player, that's not exactly going to be possible. And there's there's plenty of choice to replace it with, in my personal opinion. So I wouldn't exactly say it's a difficult thing. So, Gaijin, get on that, even though you probably won't. Next up is the German Mark Collins CR-42. Oh, I love the CR-42. One of my favourite biplanes because, again, it's one of those that provides a challenge. And with it being more of a boom and zoom based biplane style, it's it's fun. This thing is a lot of fun. And of course, I have the German and the Italian one because originally the Italian Mark Collins CL42 was in the German tech tree. And before it went away, I got this thing for 250 gold needles because I had some lying around. And I thought, you know what, it's going to go away soon. I might as well add it to the old collection. This thing will be rare as rocking horse manure. And sure enough, it is. And it's just nice to have it. Of course, I will be mentioning the Mark Collins in the Italian tech tree and how I got it. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Because of course, we're throwing in China with that one. Next up, the Arado AR196A3. This was one of the event vehicles. I believe this was a Operation Summer vehicle. I think it was... What was it? I can't remember the name of the actual, um, like the actual Operation Summer event it was, but this was a reward for one, and it was the only real thing that interested me. It's certainly a very unique plane, but it's also a plane that really puts a beam up on it, you know? Germany doesn't have a single seaplane in its main tech tree that is in, well, not a premium or at least a event vehicle. That really needs to change. Same with, I believe, Russia doesn't have... I don't think Russia has one. 
Um, China doesn't have one. Italy, I don't think, has one. Neither does France or Sweden. And well, Sweden does, sorry. They have the B-17 BS. But it's seaplanes are certainly something that I hold dear to my heart because I've always enjoyed the style of them. They just look very interesting. They're certainly unique. And, well, with this thing being in the event vehicles sort of category, this really put a beam up on it when it came out. But I'm hoping we get to see some German seaplanes down the line. Next up, a plane that Devil Max will be very jealous of, the Focke-Wulf 189A1 Uhu. And no, I'm not saying that for you, Bertie, the H replaced with a W, because I know what you're like. This is a plane notorious for a bit of seal clubbing. Whilst its performance is much to be desired, and it can pretty much be knocked out of the sky with a good gust of wind, it's amazing. This thing turns like a zero, has ray gunners which are very effective at low tier. Its front guns are pretty okay for the low tier battles as well. And well, Harry's even taken this thing to what? 3-7 I think? 3-3? Three, three? And still kicks some ass with this thing. It's a fantastic vehicle and I'm so glad that I added it to my collection all those years ago when I got it. Next up is playing I'm actually working on a review for. The HE112B2U2. Sadly, this one is taking a while purely because A, laggers, and B, massive up tiers all the time. This is a fun little buzz box, and I know someone's going to say, but Joe, the plane literally right after this is a pile of crap to you. Why is this one fun? Good question. Glad you asked. This aircraft has a similar flight model to a HE112 from 2015. Now, for those veteran pilots, you may remember that, and you may remember this thing being, well, the flight model being actually pretty okay. It didn't compress very much, it certainly turned, will handle a lot better than what it does now, and this thing really feels like how a 112 should. And I'm sort of glad that I got my hands on this thing in the vehicle box, and, well, it'll be certainly something that I'm looking forward to doing a review on. Let's put it that way. Same cannot be said when I did this thing, the HE112B1U2. I believe I got this. When did I get this? This would have been a 2016 bird when I got it. There was a sale on and I think it was 50% off and I just picked this thing up because I had a bit of G's there. And yeah, I was not impressed. And even when I came to doing a review, um. This was not fun, and given the fact that there is vehicles that I still have left to cover in this showcase, directly to the right of this aircraft, this thing certainly isn't the worst, but it certainly isn't exactly breaking any records in terms of how I used it. It's not a great plane, I would not advise this aircraft. Same can also be applied to the German Wellington. I got this thing back in 2015 when I first started playing Germany. I I started playing Germany back in that time, and obviously I was still playing arcade at that time, and I wanted some premiums to bolster the lineup. This was one of them, the other was Hermann, and so was the German Yak. And, well, I wish I'd have kept the fucking receipt, because Jesus Christ this thing is trash. It's a Wellington, so it has no armour. The airframe is about as tanky as a wet bit, well, bit, blah, 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 tongue twist there, a bit of wet tissue paper, and everyone and their mothers that sees this thing sees it as a giant XP pinata, and with it getting frequent up to 3.3, it's just not good, and it is not worth your time. I would highly advise not buying this pile of crap. Moving on to the part two, we have the BF-110C6. This was, again, I believe, another, I think this was an Operation Winter vehicle? I, I don't remember. And this was a vehicle that I was very happy to add to the collection. Now, of course, the main difference between it and the C7 is instead of two 20mm MG, well, not MG, is it 151 or is it MG FFM? It's FFM, that's it. Instead of two of those, you get a single 30mm MK101. Now, they still haven't fixed the issue, I believe, with the... Yeah, they still haven't given the pilot any frontal armour, which, I mean, there's armour here, but there's normally bulletproof glass there, I believe. But, 
Oh well. You mainly have to rely on the MG-17s to do damage in this thing, which is fine. It's just, if you're trying to get a deflection shot, you're relying on low caliber. And if you're not firing a 30, which you probably should be, it's certainly an aircraft that I personally was happy to add to the collection. But, yeah, I'm not using it that much. Because the next vehicle is a hundred times better. And that, of course is my good old buddy Herman the German. This thing is one of my favorite premiums, and well, when you take a IL-2 and put it up against the Russians who don't normally play their IL-2s as heavy fighters, it's certainly one that can really put a sting in their backside if you know how to fly this thing. Now, of course, you don't get access to any rockets or anything like that. You only get access to bombs, but the bob is packing enough punch, and the 23s are more than capable of top down in most vehicles you'll see in grab forces anyway. And they're even capable of popping medium tanks in air realistic battles, which really gives the thing a benefit. And for 850 Golden Eagles, well, if you haven't seen my review for it, go check it out, because this thing's a beast. Same also for the German Yak 1B. Now, of course, with the Shavak getting a bit of a buff recently, this thing is even better than before. And I believe this thing is 1,000 Golden Eagles? I'm, I'm trying to remember here. A, a half awake Joe is trying to remember this. But this is certainly a premium that I personally adore. And again, this is one of the premiums I got donkeys ago. Same with Herman. And I absolutely love the German Yak. And funny enough, here's, here's a memory I've just remembered. The German Yak was actually the first aircraft I ever got a team kill in. Yeah, I know. Sounds funny, but it's because someone tried to team kill me back in the days of Air AB, and I ended up having to use the German Yak to bitch slap him. So, yeah, that that that's certainly something you can claim, is certainly something that you can think of and just remember about an aircraft. It's a little bit unusual to remember a team kill, but oh well. It's just something that I just remember off the top of my head. Next up, we have a vehicle that's actually no longer available. We have good old Chubby. Now, whilst I wasn't happy with this thing being swapped out of the tech tree and being replaced with the Razorback, I don't mind it. I was the kind of person who wanted this thing to change into a Razorback and not have another premium added, but this is Gaijin, they're greedy little shits. And as a result, you still get to keep Chubby, and to be honest, I don't mind that, because I do plan to get the German Razor back at some point down the line anyway. But personally speaking, I would have just swapped out, like, I would have just turned this into the Razor back, like they did with the C7. But then again, they got a lot of hate when they did that to the C7 and the C4, so I can sort of understand why they went the route they did. But sadly, you can't get this thing anymore, so if you didn't get it, I'm sorry to say, you missed out. Next, we have the TA-154A1. The good old Spruce Goose. This is the last premium I have for Germany anyway. Um, in terms of aircraft for Germany, what can I really think of? <laughs> I, I need to look, actually. Because I don't think there's any aircraft I really want to add. I mean, other than the Razorback, which I mentioned, there isn't really anything. I mean, maybe the BV, just for the memes, but... It's Germany is one of those nations where I have so many premiums, I don't really need them, so it's quite low on the priority list. But the Spruce Goose is definitely one that I absolutely adore, and I've absolutely adored for quite a while now, purely because of its brutal firepower and performance. Next up, we have another event vehicle. This is one of the crafting vehicles, if I remember rightly. This is the SDKFC 251-10. This thing is not particularly amazing, but it's a low tier 1.0 tank destroyer with a 37mm cannon. You're not exactly expecting club worthy levels of performance with its weaponry. Now of course, it is still capable and it is still a lot of fun, but it's still a 251 and there's a lot of seal clubbers at low tier nowadays. And this thing just can't really stand up to them. Same cannot be said about the 140-1. This is one of the few 
Well, if I, I, I remember when I got this thing. This was 2016 after I finished my GCSEs. And, well, sorry, no, I finished, was it, was it my GCSEs or was it my marks? No, it would have been my GCSEs. Um, and this was one I treated myself to after doing that. And, well, it's been in my collection for that long. You can imagine how much use I've had out of it. It's a vehicle that's very commonly associated with seal clubbing, which, yeah, it's a clubber. But it's still a lot of fun. And, well, it's it's starter pack that it now gets is rather pathetic, to be brutally honest. I mean, you get this thing, but the aircraft you get, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, because I plan to review the packs at some, well, at some point. And... I'm not impressed that they put this thing with such a bad plane, let alone a plane that jumps this thing to 2.3. Let's put it that way. Next up, we have another infamous low tier clubber, the Panzer II C DAC, also known as the Desert Africa Corps. Recently, this thing has gotten a bit of a nerf, which I'm sort of thankful for, because I'm sorry, this thing was a ridiculous vehicle, especially if you met it in an early French tank. But this thing needed a nerf. <laughs> Just saying, I don't care what anyone says, this thing needed a nerf. But it's certainly a vehicle that I've had my fair share of use out of. And whilst I'm glad they nerfed it, it is still a tank I'll have to eventually drive out again at some point because someone will probably make a sub request for it once I'm able to do tanks again. And this is a tank that is a bit of hit and miss. Like, sure, it's a clubber, but at the same time, it's not as fun as you might think, if that makes sense. Same cannot be said for the next vehicle, the SDKZ 234-1. One, of, This is a vehicle that has st stirred up its fair share of controversy, same with the Dash 3. A lot of players were complaining about this thing getting access well, given to more experienced players, and I kind of agree with that. Because the problem, well, I mean, some newer players got it, so it's not really purely just those kind of players but this is a 20 millimeter hvap spammer on a puma chassis at 1.7 yeah this thing's a little bit broken in the good hands and i just think with the way they've done some of the event vehicles recently they really shouldn't have done it i mean the itp is fine because it's the battle pass but then you have things like this and the dash 3 i just don't get it, really. And speaking of the Dash 3, we have the Dash 3. This thing isn't as clubby, but it still has a 3.6 second reload, which can go down even further if you're put on an ace crew, spamming heat with 100 millimeters of pen. And I can understand why people were pissed off at this thing. And to be brutally honest, I can kind of understand that. But even so, I, I don't make the rules in terms of this game, so I can't exactly say if they've done a bad thing or not. But I really think they need to go to back to the drawing boards some of the events they did. But anyway, that's the end of the showcase for Germany. As you can see, we had quite a few German premiums to cover. But of course, next up is Mother Russia. I'm not giving you any hints yet. <laughs> you can wait till next week, because that's how this is going to work. Once every week, I'll just release one of these and just get them done. because. At the end of the day, it's a long-winded sub-request. Rainy's going to have to wait quite a while for it to be fully finished. So I think one episode per week is more than fair enough until we get it done. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed seeing all my German vehicles, as well as me discussing some of the more, shall we say, controversial ones. And I will catch you all on the next one.